How to Cram in Dragons episode 6 and I'm back from my weekly video burnout, ready to get burned again. 10 years have passed since episode 5 and I can't wait to see them spend half the episode explaining what's happened since then instead of actually showing it. Let's go. First up is a good old birthing scene. Nothing like a strong woman in action, am I right, guys? She's got that after her mother. Your queen is a strong woman. Indeed. And after not having aged for a day for three years, time really has caught up with our homegirl here. But with that said, the resemblance of new Rhaenyra and her mother Aima is about as on point as Rhea Royce's makeup, so big props to casting on that one. Right, so she's been in labor for a while, but where is the father, if I may ask? No good piece of... Oh, hi, Lenor. A boy. I've just had. God bless the patriarchy. Where are you going? She wants to see him. And by she, they mean Alicent. Right, because we wouldn't want to leave the audience thinking childbirth is a walk in the park, so naturally, Rhaenyra is made to walk unassisted through the castle, the poor but also strong woman. Ben, hey, Lainor, good to see the ten years have treated you so well. Love the new hair, new face, new accent, and entirely new personality. I love it, I love it, I love it. Was it terribly painful? Yes, you fool of a man. Thank you for realistically asking such a thing. I took a laugh through the shoulder once. My deepest sympathies. Okay, men are idiots. We get it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh my goodness, I think something's actually about to happen. Nope, oh, false alarm. Everything is fine, people. No developments taking place here. Carry on. And then Crispy, who neither ages nor sees people coming straight at him for miles away, stands in their way for a while before obviously letting them pass. Princess? And well inside, we're introduced to another who's aged really well. Rhaenyra. Damn, I thought I would miss young Allison, but gosh. Then the king pulls up, and I guess he used up all his reverse agent magic in episode 4, but he's looking as cheerful as ever. I do hope the labor was easy. I think I called the midwife a c Another realistic exchange on the topic of childbirth. Are they actually still bothering with the Emmys this year? If he has his father's nose. <sighs> do keep trying, Selena. Sooner or later you may get what it looks like you. <laughs> what do you mean? He's got his father's... N oh. Oh, you mean like... Like... Oh, no. What are you? Some kind of savage. Haven't you heard racism ain't a thing in Westeros? It's actually really nice and convenient. How does the queen miss something big like that? Anyway, back in Rhaenyra's crib, the captain of the city watches casually and fully armored, hanging out with her kids that all happen to look exactly like him, but could also totally be Lainor's because I'm open-minded. Back to the dragon pit. To the dragon pit! Ah, and here we get our first glimpse of how to actually train your dragon. You know what? I've always wondered how the bonding and training works. Okay, let's check it out. Dracarys Vermax. Hmm, okay, I kind of feel like we knew that one already. What else is there? Behold, the pink dress. <laughs> oh, what a bunch of little shits. I hope they betrothed you all to Marjorie Tyrell. Ooh, but what's this? Aemon's sneaking down the dragon stem. Surely something is bound to actually happen there. Okay, so my guess is he's gonna find a secret passage to the Red Keep and run into Laris. Ooh, or maybe he'll find a dented dragon egg and cherish it until it hatches a disabled dragon and it'll be the most touching relationship between two misfits ever. Oh, okay, well that didn't lead anywhere. Cool story, bro. Back in the Red Keep, we've got the young Helena, who the show keeps on refusing to name, and Mama Allison struggling to connect with her introverted ass as she prefers the company of centipedes. It has eyes, though. I don't believe it can see. Ooh, pay attention to this one. Then Eamon comes in, and despite his little adventure not having any consequences whatsoever, Alison decides to make a massive deal out of it. Well, must I have you confined to your chamber? He made me do it! The last ring has no legs at all. Uh, symbolism again? He'll have to close an eye. Dude, spoilers! And over in the king's chambers, Alison keeps pushing her agenda on race biology. To have one child like that is a mistake. To have three is an insult. Sheesh, Ama called and wants her twisted ideas on biology back. Have I lost my sanity, Sir Kristen? Not sure he's the right person to ask for mental health advice. The Princess Rhaenyra is a spider who stings and sucks her prey dry. A spider who sucks her prey dry? Since when? Since she didn't want to run away with you in a boat full of oranges? You let that little girl disarm you. And as we're treated to yet another subtle bit of symbolism by egg on the wet. Alison comes in to combine repetition with exposition. If Rhaenyra comes into power, your very life could be forfeit. Yeah, but only if Aegon challenges her for the throne. You are the challenge! You are the challenge, Aegon! Jesus, lady, the lad's just trying to enjoy himself. Is that one day you will be our king? Get dressed. 
All right, well, enough with the blabbering. Let's see some dragons in action, shall we? <laughs> yeah, who needs story developments when you can have pointless scenes of dragons flying around? Oh, and this must be Lena Velaryon on Vagar. Very cool. Can't wait to hear all about how they got together. <laughs> oh, she sure got you there, Damon. A little dragon fire never hurt nobody, you silly goose. Ooh, and let's discover what might be had for supper in Pentos. Lamb hearts are excellent. We are fortunate in our cook, Your Excellence. Anyway, let's see how these ten years have treated old Damaru. Mmm, yeah, Damon and Kristen are officially vampires. And maybe it's this brings me to some business. Yes, you see, this guy wishes to gift them a mansion in exchange for some dragon power now that the Triarchy is back on the menu in the Stepstones. Such a shame Damon's master plan of leaving only crabs for Garrison didn't pay off. Who holds the Stepstones? The Tides, the Crabs, and 2,000 dead Triarchy Corsairs. Your Excellence, we've already extended our visit here. It's a most generous offer. And one we will certainly entertain. Yeah, not consulting your Pregasaurus girlfriend is a proven strategy. Damon really is living life on the wild side, guys. And as you might expect from someone mentally unstable who violated sacred guest right, assaulted the future king, and murdered his bodyguard, Sir Kristen is now training the children to use weapons. <laughs> and hanging around in full armor as usual is Uncle Daddy. Uh, but to be fair, if I had sick armor like that, I'd probably wear it all the time too. No matter how heavy it gets. And it gets heavy, trust me. Not the kind of thing you'd casually strut around in all day. This is the stuff, Lino. Lads that learn together, train together. Mmm, but some lads are together more than others, and Daddy Strong is not too happy with it. Seems the younger boys could do better with a bit of your attention. So, Crispo pulls what in medieval terms is known as a d move and sets Aegon against Jaceris out of pure spite. Hardly a fair match. I know you've never seen true battle, sir, but when Steelers draw a fair match isn't something anyone should expect. Touché! But as one might expect, Jaceris gets battered and Harwin intervenes before the match goes from learning experience to traumatic events. Enough! Your interest in the Princeling's training is quite unusual, Commander. Yeah, you really could be more discreet around the mentally unstable murderer that has it in for you and your kids. Most men would only have that kind of devotion toward a cousin or a son. <laughs> ah, yes, and assaulting him totally proves him wrong. <laughs> Although, seeing as assault and murder is consequence-free in this show, why not? Good for you, Harwin. Oh, but perhaps not so consequence-free after all. Here Harwin gets told off by his dad. Does that count? Not really, huh? Okay, well, good bit of dialogue, though. Your intimacy with the Princess Rhaenyra is an offense that would mean exile and death. And yet today, you publicly assaulted a knight of the King's heart in the, in the defense of your... You have your honor. And I have mine. And back in the nursery, Rhaenyra's breasts receive more attention in 60 seconds than Kristen Cole murdering and assaulting people at a royal wedding does over the span of the entire season. To ease the pain, Princess. You'll feel better in a day or two, when the milk dries up. You in very much pain. The milk swells the breast. Would you mind, Sir Carlo? Yeah, Carl, you think we got time for the likes of you? We don't have time to develop the main cast as it is. Get your ass out of here. Whoa. Is a foot again in the Stepstones, Rhaenyra. After all this time, this is just what I need. A little adventure. Are you mad? Why are you even surprised, Rhaenyra? People undergo rapid personality changes and go mad in King's Landing all the time. Dark rumors are hunting us, Lionel. Vile, disgusting insinuations. Insinuations, aren't they? They are our sons! Jesus, this is Sansa and Arya all over again. What's the point of pretending amongst yourself when nobody else is listening? Give me a break. For ten years, you have indulged yourself at court. But you do not desert your post when the storm lashes. The wise sailor flees the storm as it gathers. Ooh, nice one. Love the sprinkles of good dialogue here and there. And now for something completely different. Half of them never do, you know. What? Hatch. Ah, yes. Let's check the replay on that wonderful piece of dialogue, shall we? Half of them never do, you know. What? Hatch. Ugh, anyway. Like any good parent would, Lena then goes on to flex on the poor child. I was without one until I was 15 years old. And now I ride Vega, the largest in the world. 
But if you wish to be a rider, you must claim that right. Ooh, maybe now we'll finally get to hear all about how you and Vagar found each other. It must be such a fascinating story. Shame we didn't get to see it on screen, but I suppose a campfire story will have to suff- Nope, the scene ends. Maybe next time. This scene is completely f pointless, so let's move on to the small council meeting, and boy are the stones in good order. Now, god-awful dialogue aside, something actually happens here, kind of, as... We should address the latest developments in the Stepstones, my lords. Oh, if ever we shut up that blasted place. Not if you leave crabs for garrison. There should have been fortifications built. We cannot afford it. Okay. Cost of war is greater. Ooh, good point. What does the defense have to say about that? Let us be finished. Alrighty then. I wish to speak. Yeah, see, Rhaenyra here wants to mend the divide between the families by betrothing their children. But the trouble is that her kids are B-words, and that is simply not gonna fly in a medieval society considering the taboos. A bit like sexism and racism. Oh yeah, not racism. Sorry, my bad. Rhaenyra. Oh, Seven Hills. Yes, let's forget all about war and internal affairs because Ray Ray's tits are leaking. And let's instead move on to Lionel resigning as Hand of the King. What? I have come to resign my position as Hand of the King. Would you look at that, Alison? It's your lucky day. I can no longer serve you with integrity. Right, because his son has been harwin a good time with the princess. Very shameful. You will continue in your service to the crown. Whoops, not so lucky after all. Well, at least he'll be out of the capital for a while as he escorts his son back to Harrenhal. That's sure to keep everybody nice and safe. And upstairs, it turns out that the secret to not aging for 10 years is to start eating before your dinner guests arrive. I took the liberty of beginning without you, your grace. Mmm, let the wine flow red and the gossip run rampant. Talia, not now. For f**k's sake, Talia. Sorry, you guys were saying? My father cannot give unbiased counsel to the king. In all of King's Landing, is there no one to take my side? Oh, you mean like any hand of the king who isn't in your pocket should be assassinated? Say no more. Fast forward, but not really, it's literally the next scene, to Lairs visiting the dungeons to hire some reliable henchmen, but those are hard to come by these days, so what is a man to do but to cut their tongues out and put his sigil on them to ensure their discretion? And over in Pentos, it's time for a much-needed second birth scene this episode, and Lena is laboring away like a champ. Look at her scream. Such strong, very woman. <laughs> And guys, remember in episode 1 when Viserys was faced with the impossible choice of saving either the mother or the child as Emma was having complications? Well, this time it's completely different, and the choice is between saving the child or none at all. I could lay open the womb. Would the mother survive it? No. So, Lena does the only reasonable thing and teleports past Damon, doctors, and guards to kill herself and the baby in a suicide by dragon. Dragonis! And just like that, Vagar's fire burns hot, and Damon shows up right on cue, but not in time to intervene. Then back in King's Landing, it's time to say goodbye as Harwin hints at his death. When we meet again, I will be a stranger. Is Harwin strong, my father? Am I a bastard? You're a wizard, Harry. That's all that matters. And in the courtyard, Lainor and boyfriend show us how to not do sword fighting. Seriously, what the hell is this? And Rhaenyra comes to tell him that... We're finished here. We're leaving. What of your position? Yes, Rhaenyra, what about all the important things you do and the impact you have on the narrative? The wise sailor flees the storms it gathers. I mean, yeah, okay, whatever, man. Anyway, over at Harrenhal, the Strongs arrive and Laris' marked assassins are basically invisible hiding in the shrubbery like that. Because, you see, it's time to off some characters, and although they may not have completed any resemblance of character arcs, they certainly have done their part in the eyes of the writers, which in modern Hollywood terms means a ticket straight to... I did not wish for this. Oh my god, nothing's ever good enough. Women, am I right? Well, her wishes did come true whether she wished them or not, and Laris intends to reap the rewards either way. I feel certain you will reward me when the time is right. And that's the episode, guys. Thanks to all for asking about when this episode will come out. I'm honored there are those of you looking forward to these videos, as I look forward to making them. We just launched a second channel for more lightly produced content, as well as an upcoming podcast. So subscribe to that and follow us on Instagram. Links in description. Other links in description include Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee if you feel like supporting my work. I do hope you enjoy this video. Like and subscribe if you did. Leave a comment or two. I love hearing your guys' opinions and feedback, so let's get the discussion going. I'll be back soon with another video, so look forward to that, and I'll see you then. And as always, thank you for watching.